Welcome to Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. Thank you for listening to our podcast all around the world. Make sure you check out the website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we have so many great articles and blogs on the site for you to check out. And feel free to give us a call anytime, one 800 420 1980 and check us out on instagram at cannabis talk 101 my brother from another mother blue is at the number one christopher wright and i am at joe grande 52 and i gotta remind you guys about the bear flag group which are white label partners they're known to be on time accurate and do quality co-packaging they've been launching brands in california since 2015 and at the bear flag group they do what they say they're going to do go check them out online at bearflaggroup.com on the show today is a badass you guys connor I think we're going to do something where you get on the ground and he does something with you so people can watch this on YouTube. Because I think we need to see the caveman really get you in this whole fucking caveman headlock and, and just really see what it's about. And I think you're the, because you're younger than me. You're going to put me in a pretzel? I'm just saying, you're bragging about how much younger. I'm 23, Joe. Yeah, I've got I'm some the young dexterity. guy. Yeah, I, I played professional soccer. I could take on those jujitsu guys. This and that. Well, Yo, we, I've got a black belt. Exactly. Well, this guy really does have a black belt from subversive Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's an American jiu-jitsu specialist. Sloan Climber is in the building with us today, known for his mysterious mustache that could be a porn stash or a dirty cop stash. Either one, you make fun of him, he might take you down. <laughs> And tickle you with it. But <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about this subversive Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you guys. It was founded in 2018, and it's by the far the biggest platform out there for jiu-jitsu, period. It was created to bring awareness to veterans suffering from PTSD and as a platform for suicide prevention, get their rolling, working out, and getting rid of your demons in your head. Subversive quickly became a fan favorite due to its innovation in combat sports, top-tier production, world-class athletes, and nothing to do with Mike, but the content that was created was everything that was there. I like that I got him to turn around there. Presented by Rockwell, a company that designed dope tactical watch eye and active apparel. Subversive will hold its next event which is going to involve combat jiu-jitsu on saturday july 22nd at the marina sheraton in san diego california you guys come by and enjoy these athletes battle for the subversive west coast championship there'll be an after party directly after hosted at ghost get your tickets at subversive bjj.com that's s-u-b v E R S I V B J J dot com and check them out on social media at subversive B J J. And for those who want to go, we're going to give away five pair of tickets. So if you want to go and you're in the San Diego area, you're in the Southern California, you can come by the cannabis talk one on campus. I got five pair for the first five people that call us up at one 800 420 1980 our email Connor at Cannabis Talk 101 and tell him you want some tickets or just email and tell him how the show sounds because he's our technical director doing this. So feel free to do either one, but really give us a call. And without further ado, you guys, I mean, Sloan, you're the co-main event fighting at this big event in San Diego. How excited are you for that? Oh, very excited. I mean, I just love fighting. I love battling. And uh, I got a good opponent. This will be a combat jujitsu match. So for those of uh, yeah, what's you the difference who, when you say the combat? So combat jujitsu is basically a jujitsu match, a grappling match, but you can palm strike each other too. You can smack. So you each can other. strike. So there's some blood. There's some smacking. Yeah. And uh, so makes, are these sanctioned events then too? Since yeah. they're striking like that? Yeah, oh. yeah. They're, they're sanctioned events. And um, so that's the difference in combat jujitsu. You're actually open hand palm smacking. Exactly. Connor, can you take one of these from him real quick? <laughs> I just want someone to get hit real bad so far today. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, jujitsu, it, it's, you know, it's struggled a bit as, as far as its popularity um, amongst other like mainstream sports. But I think combat jujitsu is a good bridge because everybody loves fighting. Everybody loves MMA. Um, they love violence. It and gives us more of the MMA feel rather than just two guys rolling around who are not who people who don't appreciate the jujitsu exactly. will look at it and be like, oh, well, no one's getting knocked out because no one's getting knocked out in jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, no Period. one's getting knocked out. Ever. So, so for well, people, maybe if you get slammed on your head, actually, maybe yeah, that could be actually kind of really hard. It. Yeah. It's happened. Um, 
but you know with combat jujitsu it's that that element of violence and and the potential of blood and somebody getting knocked out that it makes people want to watch you know what i mean because that's like it's a fight essentially you know what i mean yeah we're not like we're not elbowing each other or punching each other but man people get messed up with with palm strikes oh fuck dude that could hurt yeah that's crazy so who yeah, are you fighting? <clears throat> Gabriel Checo. He's a pro M- MMA fighter and uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, big, strong dude, but I want to put the smack down on him. So it'll be you're a, a middleweight. Time. Is that what you uh, are? I'm a light heavyweight. Light heavy. So, okay. Uh, I was wondering too. I'm like, it's really thick. Yeah. Yeah. 205 is the weight class. Um, so, so yeah. That's going to be interesting. And for those who are wondering, why is he on the show? Well, he's a connoisseur and uses cannabis. And how do you use cannabis, Sloan, for your... These days, I mainly use edibles. um, Just because, I mean, I... I I try to keep my lungs clear. You know, I, I do like vapes too. I I prefer, uh, prefer the THC vapes, but you know, more than anything for me, it's like, uh, it's, it's a sleep medication, you know, right. Which is good. You need your rest. Exactly. Are you using CBDs or any treatments for after workouts or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I use CBD a lot, uh, in the evenings. I got some CBD, uh, drops that I use, uh, pretty often. And, um, you know, it just helps put you in that. I, I'm sure I'm botching this. I'm no scientist, but it like, it puts you in that like parasympathetic state where your, your body's able to kind of relax and recover after like a hard training session. I can just feel it like within 30 minutes of, of taking a CBD oil where I just kind of, I just chill out. You know Who introduced I mean? you to that as you were training and figured out like, this would be some good medicine to use the original, uh, person who, introduced me to cbd was my friend jesse he owns a zinja health ninja i think he also goes by zinja hemp ninja and um his own little cbd company down in san diego and he just threw me some free stuff and was like hey man try this out we were training partners and um and i i liked it ever since and now you know i'm working with uh, ghost and and we've had some other cbd and cannabis companies who've sponsored me and given me a lot of free product uh for being an athlete on this show and they're just helping push this whole uh combat jujitsu uh, uh thing you know and and uh funding it all so it's really cool that's a good thing and, and i love the fact that it's going to be here locally in san diego and mike that's working our own subversive Seems like a good dude. I don't know, though. I don't know about him so far, but we're going to find out. He's questionable. Yeah, Mm -hmm. very questionable. But this event, what can people expect when they go to a submersive BJJ event? Subversive. Subversive. (laughs) Uh, It's uh, full of excitement. I mean, even before when he was just doing regular, I mean, subversive wasn't always a combat jujitsu event. It was uh, originally it was just a regular jujitsu event. And um, they've always been exciting, though, with the whole production and the setup of the stage. Uh, they always bring in exciting athletes to um, the venues are always just it's just a cool setup. It's a vibe. There's music playing. Um, and uh, that's so it's un- like you're going to a big fight, Phil, period. Yeah. Feel, yeah. Yeah. A big fight slash a big party slash uh, a sporting event. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like. It's got all the those things. Um, and, and I know you guys have been real friendly with the cannabis community, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. Which is so. kind of interesting that, like, there's been brands at a lot of your guys' events before in the past. For sure. And, you know, this is the thing. There's still, like, I mean, not so much anymore, especially in California. But I would say in America in general, there's, like, that stigma um, amongst cannabis users that, you know, like, they're losers or maybe they're uh they they're people who they aren't athletes you know what i mean like you don't you, that's that's what people think who who aren't involved but uh i know a lot of high level athletes and guys who train and you know they they smoke and they it's it's helpful it's, well not only that it's, like, it's literally medicine right they, that's, and when you look at what the ncaa is now looking into dropping it and then you look at the nfl looking at it, major league baseball hockey already did so you're looking at these sports going you know what this is major we're getting it it should be banned as far as from a testing substance it's nothing to enhance your ability so why are we sweating it like it's a, a P, you know what I mean? It's, exactly. not, it's not a performance enhancing drug. No, no. It's By just, no means. It's literally just a, a medication. Man, I've seen, I, I've honestly seen people. I had a friend 
when I, not to get off on a tangent, but I no, have a friend please. in high school um, who I saw weed make him a better person when, you know, he was always like against it in high school. And this guy, he was like super rough around the edges and just, um, he's just kind of a, a, a mean hearted dude. He, he grew up with kind of a bad home life and, but he was always kind of against weed and cannabis. And he always thought, you know, that's for fucking hippies, you know what I mean? But then, once uh, our circle of friends kind of introduced it to to some of us and he eventually got talked into it, I saw him, you know, he, he didn't never turned into like a, a full blown like pothead, but he started smoking it a little bit more regularly and I could see him become like a more um, like empathetic, compassionate person over the course of. I don't know, a, a year or two. It's funny and, you say that, dude. I've seen people like that too. And not only that, I can tell when they've been, you know, on the medication, yeah. so to speak, because my brother's one of them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, dude, you need to go just take a hit real quick. You're being an asshole. Yeah. You dude. know what I mean? And it's like, he takes a hit and he's just a nicer dude. 100. Man, it, me personally, you know, if, if I, uh, if, if I smoke or, or, uh, you know, whatever, however I ingest, you know, it's anything that maybe I was pissed off about or I was upset about or bitter about it's, I almost always recognize that it, it's bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, Oh my gosh, like I got so many other things to, to worry about. I, I got so much to be grateful for. Why was I upset about that thing? You know what I mean? It just makes you kind of look at the big picture a little bit easier. I feel like too. So that's a good side effect. Yes, it is. And it's not only that, it's a good medicine, especially after your fights as Sloan is fighting for the co-main event. You guys, you want to go out there. If you're in the San Diego area, we're going to be out there July 22nd, the Marina Sheridan in San Diego. Once again, I got five pair of tickets. 1-800-420-1980. Leave me your name, your number, email address, something like that. We'll get in contact with you. Get your butts over here to the campus, and we'll make that happen. We're going to come back and find out a little bit more about you, Sloan, where you're from and who you are. I know you're from San Diego, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, I've lived in San Diego for about eight years now. Well, we'll come back oh, after sure. this break right now. Oh, here no, we go. No, it's no, Cannabis yeah. Talk 101. you guys seen the latest edition of the cannabis talk magazine but it has some great articles and very cool stories in it get yourself a hard copy today at your local dispensary or smoke shop near you if they don't have one have them give us a call 1-800-420-1980 or go check out the magazine online cannabis talk magazine.com and subscribe now as we have a new one about to come out soon as well so sloan San Diego, you're not born and raised, or no, you are? No, so I, I've lived in San Diego for about eight years. I'm originally from Indiana. Oh, really? Um, yeah, born and raised in Indiana. I'm 30 years old now. I've lived, I, I moved to San Diego when I was 22. Uh, I just, I, you know, I wasn't living the best lifestyle uh, out in Indiana. I was, you know, hanging around the wrong group of people, finding myself in trouble a lot. And, one day I just, I, I been doing martial arts since I was 15 and been doing jujitsu and MMA and boxing since I was pretty young. And I just, uh, had an epiphany 
actually after a, a bar fight that me and my friends uh, got into with some people one night and which was a regular occurrence, like almost every weekend, by the way, but, and you're not a bouncer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, uh, was laying in bed one night and I was like, man, what am I doing with my life? Like, I want to pursue martial arts. I want to, um, I want to be a fighter. I want to get my black belt in jujitsu one day. And that next morning <clears throat> it just hit me. I was like, I got to move. I got to get out of here. And so I, uh, I packed my bags, saved up a little bit of money for the next few months. And I just drove out to San Diego and, and made it work. It's a crazy story. It's a long story. You didn't have a place or anything. You just kind of did it. Or like <clears throat> So there was uh, a guy who he was like an acquaintance of mine. I want to say we were friends. He was a friend of one of my friends. And I knew that he was living out here at the time. I got a hold of him through Facebook, had a phone call with him. And he's like, Hey man, you can sleep on my couch until, you know, you get your own place. And, um, so I drove out here. Uh, That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I stayed on his couch for, I think nine days total. And then I got my, my apartment and, um, and been grinding ever since. How awesome is that? And when did you get your black belt? I got my black belt. It was March of 2021. So I've been a black belt for a little over two years now. That's some major discipline. That's like hardcore. Yeah. It's, it's some tough shit that we do. And as you get your black belt, do you look back and look at that fucking guy that was creating bar fights and this and that going, wow, my discipline was so out of line. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Cause when you get that black belt, like not that I have one or anything, but I've trained a lot and fought a lot. And worked out with a lot of people who do, and, and I know how they are. Mm-hmm. And they're just so well mannered, so well tamed. Yeah. Because you just have so much appreciation for the art and you know you're a badass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, after training for 15 years, your uh your confidence in, in what you're capable of kind of changes and you're not you're not looking to prove yourself as much as, as what you, you once were as like for me anyways, like when I was, a, you know, a young 20 year old kid, um, I felt like I had to puff my chest out at everybody and, and, and be known for being the tough guy. But now it's like, I know I'm the tough guy. You know what I mean? It's like, Yo, I'm, I get I'm in on, the ring I'm yeah. on stages doing this shit. I'm getting paid for it. It's like, uh, like I don't need to act tough to, to your average Joe anymore, you know? So, so are you coaching and training as well? Do you have classes and everything? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I am a full-time instructor. I'm one of the the head instructors at Legion American Jiu Jitsu down in San Diego, uh, California. And, um, I teach, uh, five days a week, every morning and pretty much every night too. I teach gi and no gi Jiu Jitsu. And then I have some clients that I do private lessons with. I still teach some boxing, uh, cause I boxed for years as well. And, uh, and yeah, and I just, I compete full time too and, and train and that's it. That's always good. Now your hometown can go out there and watch you fight. All your students can go out there and watch you exactly. see what you really got coach in the ring. Uh, Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes it more exciting. At it being in, it in, puts uh, a lot of pressure hometown. and excited and everything else on it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's like the type of pressure when you get, you're like, Oh my God. Cause I fought eight times in the ring uh-huh. and I just know that feeling when everybody goes out to support you, you're like, Oh my God, it's the greatest, but it's the worst. It's scary, man. It's a, it just, you know, I always said like, I, I do really well. I, it feels different when you go to like another state and you compete versus, uh, you know, doing one in your backyard you don't feel as nervous when you're in another state and you don't have anybody there like cheering you on in the crowd. Cause you're just like, ah, oh, whatever happens happens. You know what? I don't even, these people don't even know me. You know what I'm saying? But then when you, when you're competing around all your friends, your family, you're the your co-main students, event. You're, you're like, co- wait a minute. Yeah. It gets more, but it's, and you're a teacher now. You're like, is this yeah. the first time you're fighting on a card that you're the full on teacher? And Oh no. Oh, no. so you've been, I've, okay. I've been doing this it locally while. though. Yeah. Uh, trying to you know i've I've had a few matches in la okay I, so but and, and i've competed in san diego but small regional local tournaments not like not not in a big event you know what i mean so uh this i would say this is the first time i've been on a big stage in san diego since uh since i've been a, a black belt and a full-time instructor i think yeah yeah, that's what I mean. I think there's a different pressure there. Yeah, a little bit. Uh huh. Because like okay. all, all my fights when I fought, I was on the radio in San, in San Francisco, and all my fights were in the Bay Area, mm. and I was the guy on the radio. 
saying, you know, I can kick your ass if you could hear my voice. Yeah. <laughs> like I was that idiot. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, then I let the listeners call in and they're like, I, whoever you guys want to pick, but then, I'm 240. I'm like, you're not big enough. You yeah. know what I mean? This is I was over 300 pounds uh, too. Oh right. Gosh. So I'm like, dude, I'm a big, like I was an ex bouncer and football player rugby. And I used to train a lot. So it's like, I was really good at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I won eight times, but I was, you know, it was a lot of pressure for sure it is you know what i'm saying especially when i didn't know who it was and i don't know i have no tape no nothing you're just going off of well we're gonna pick the biggest toughest guy that they say is a pick you know whatever so it's just always fun and that was like before the whole internet was out and everything else you can see how somebody fights or see how tough somebody really is exactly what their strengths and weaknesses are where it's like okay what's whatever uh-huh. But I was already so doped up though. <laughs> I didn't care. I was like, <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Makes wow. for a good time. Well, I'm excited to come out there and watch you, Sloan. And uh, as you came out of here, you get your black belt. There's so many different big schools. Well, I don't know about so many, but a couple of big names for the jujitsu. I mean, I think the biggest one that's out there is the Gracies. Of course, right? I mean, you look and you drive around, you'll see Gracie Jiu-Jitsu here, there, everywhere. Yeah. I think that's the most common one. Well, sure. I mean, they, they were the ones who really, like, <clears throat> brought it to America and, and, and popularized it uh, through the, the UFC and the Gracie challenges and stuff. But, I mean, now it's branched out so much. There, You know, my school in particular, Legion, we were one of the first gyms. I don't want to say we were the first, but we're one of the first to uh, go off the, the beaten path and, and call our school American Jiu-Jitsu instead of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, because the, the Gracies are what they were the ones who named it uh or labeled it brazilian jiu-jitsu and you know it pissed some people off but uh, but that's what it is now it's like we've been doing it in the u.s for so long there's so many different styles it's integrated with wrestling and and, and we've and had fighters in the ufc and, that come from legion i've heard the name from several different uh fights like oh they're trained at legion blah blah blah, blah. like i've yeah. heard the name it's, yeah it's yeah very common name now yeah uh-huh. we're a uh, we're pretty popular school now down in san diego we might be the most popular in san diego right now oh really yeah one definitely one of them how big's the place three the actual gym i don't know by square footage but it's huge and we got a lot of students and um it's a really nice facility only one location though we have our headquarters right there in san diego and um we have yet to open any uh, official affiliations yet. I don't, I don't think nothing don't. like in the Bay area or coming to LA or <clears throat> nothing like we, that. Yet. Well, we've talked about it and that's something that we're probably going to do at some point, but right now it's uh it's just San Diego. So with this being American Jiu Jitsu, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is there any other Jiu Jitsu's out there that are making noise? Like that's just the, the two. Well, and the certain, different styles, look, like break down Jiu Jitsu for everybody listening. Is there, certain tempo this or that or it at the end of the day it's all the same stuff man it's all grappling you know it's just it's which all, is on the ground wrestling grabbing hand coordination yes. locks this and that exactly it's, Submer- it's all the same submissive, stuff man tapping them out because that's more of the fighters that are fighting are on the ground and if you tap them out on the ground it's more of the jujitsu style fighting yeah, exactly yeah so i'm just trying to explain it for the listeners out there too i mean i know you know but <laughs> sure sure yeah yeah um yeah, it's 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 all merged together. It's all just jujitsu, you know what I mean? And so you can label it whatever you want. We call it American Jiu Jitsu because it, we're we're doing this in America and at our facility it's all American instructors and you know, and I learned most of my jujitsu coming up uh through all Americans. I didn't really ever go to like an official uh Brazilian jiu jitsu school or learn from another Brazilian. So to me it, it feels it feels right to call it American Jiu Jitsu, you know. Um, so yeah. Well, I mean, you look at American Kickboxing Academy, mm-hmm. Javier Mendez, right there, out of the Bay Area. I mean, come on, that's not a uncommon. He's a Mexican dude at that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just I, I don't know. I think it's cool. It's, it should be what it is, yeah. especially if the guys have been here for long enough. And I mean, is it true? story that jiu-jitsu was started and found in brazil or do we know the story i don't even know the story no, like that not necessarily i mean i mean uh, submission grappling which is what we're doing that's what it is if you you know it's um man 
They were doing that in Greece, like back in ancient Greece. You can see old statues of guys that, Good point. That choking You're right. each other. Yeah, at the Olympics, and, bro. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, man. It's been around forever, dude. So it's like to say that what we're doing is this one thing. Brazil, the Brazilians and the Gracies, those are the ones who really, like I said, they popularized it in America. But there was already like catch wrestling going on. There was already not to take anything away from them. What they did was great. And I wouldn't be here right now talking to you was, if, yeah. if it wasn't for them, you know, coming to the U S and, and blowing it up into what it is now. But, uh, it, you know, it's submission grappling has been going on since the beginning of time. Exactly. So it's not like, Oh, it's just this one. It's just that when we come back, we're going to take a break. Sloan caveman climber is fighting in the co-main event, you guys, in San Diego, California, the Marina Sheridan, July 22nd. You want your tickets? Call us up, 1-800-420-1980. Leave us a message. We'll hit you back. Come by the campus, and we'll make it happen, Captain. We're going to come back. Sloan, I want to hear your best feeling when you knock somebody out and the hardest hit you ever took. Who and where was that at? It's Cannabis Talk 101, and I'm not talking about weed. We'll be right back after this break. My thought process says, fresh. Fresh. <laughs> it smells fresh. We use Loran's Did oils. you just, nah, uh, really? Yep. Yeah. We use All Lorenz. bullshit aside, another yeah, fucking yeah. client. Yeah. This is great. And I love it. Hold on. I'm going to try I was one. just going to say, I, I want to try plug Loran too. But that's awesome. Look at this. I'll pop because it smells so good. What color, I, what color did oh, you say? Oh, God, I don't know. Green. How perfect. Green. Been doing. Yeah. It's all Loran's. Turn your typical into something special, folks. When it comes to infused products, the flavor you taste should be just as enjoyable as the feeling you experience. Visit the website, loranoils.com. We're sitting here with Sloan, the caveman climber, a subversive BJJ event that's going down before we went to break. I want to know that best hit you got, Sloan, where you go, oh, my God, I always remember that one clean. Whether it was a knockout punch or a sub, you know, lock that you got, what was that one? What's that moment? Uh, well, first, are we um, are we discussing this just in a in a professional manner? Like, no, in a it could be it could be or... when you were a youngster, like an idiot, but fighting at those bars that you're talking oh. about, and you got one too. Because as you say that, I think of four punches I threw when I was playing rugby, and a big rugby fight came out, and I threw four knockouts right in a row, bam, 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 <laughs> bam, and that was like the craziest ever for me. Like, I've never knocked four people out ever again. And never at one punch each. So for me, like, that's my story in my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've fought in rings eight times. I've done all other things. But, like, what's that one story for me? That rugby tournament I played in against, I think it was Bellarmine. And we started, got a big, big fight. Mm -hmm. And one, bam, one, bam, two, bam, three, bam, four. You know what I'm Damn. talking about. Talking so my about. point to that is it could be any story. Oh, I, I got a perfect story. Um I've never talked about this publicly, but this, this is about, <laughs> dude, what's funny is I never really said this either on any, like, I never said this out loud like that. Like, I just, I don't know, but you're bringing me back to it. This is about 10 years ago. So I think it's safe to talk about without, without getting arrested or anything, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, mine wasn't a name of sport, but yeah. <laughs> um, um, I was actually out with that, that same group of friends that, you know, the we, derelict crew. Yeah. And, uh, we were at this, <clears throat> there was this block party that used to go on once a year, uh, in Muncie, Indiana. It's, um, it's like right over from my hometown, very close by a big college town, ball state campus. Uh, so they would do this thing. This block party is called uh, Muncie Graw, And it was like a Mardi Gras themed block party people are drinking all on the streets there's there's music play, uh, bands playing vendors all on the side of the street it's a really good time well we go there one night and um we get into uh, this dude like kind of starts running his mouth to my buddy chirping off at him and um we end up getting in a scuffle with these guys i remember i got like head butted and um i threw this guy on the ground kicked him a couple times but then we got separated and and i remember cops like surrounding those guys and their friends and i was thinking okay they're probably gonna get thrown out of this this block party and it was like barred off you know you had to get tickets to get into this party and so i didn't think we had anything to worry about i thought those guys were leaving we'd are we were already making our way down the street and then like 40 minutes later we're uh we're on the other side of the block party remember us <laughs> and the, these guys walk back up and they start talking shit to us <clears throat> and 
this one guy, he was sneaky. I got to say, it was like, I, I respect his sneakiness. Cause like <laughs> while he was talking to me and my buddy, just out of nowhere, he goes, bam, he cracks me right in the mouth. Like good. And he had a ring on, he cut me real good. And so, you know, my immediate reaction was I threw a punch right back at him knocked him out cold and he just like he just stiffened up did the rigor mortis and, yeah. down. and then i turn and i see his buddy coming at me i hit him dropped him too i don't think it knocked him out cold he didn't do the rigor mortis but he definitely fell on the ground right and then my buddy eric grabbed me and was like sloan you gotta run just run sloan and so i just took off running through the crowd and my face was bleeding from the, his <laughs> ring cutting me and uh and uh yeah but i got away i didn't get uh i didn't get in any legal trouble um, what one of my buddies actually got snatched up by a cop because he started fighting the, the guy's other friends and was about to get put in handcuffs. But my other friend just so happened to know that police officer. He was like, Luke, it's Caleb. Hey, we didn't start this fight. And he, he let my friend go and he didn't get arrested. None Ooh. of us got arrested. And my friend had to, um, he was getting deployed to Afghanistan the very next day. So he, that would have ruined his whole deployment. That's why we were out. We were doing one last banger before he had to get deployed the very next day. He was in the, the army and, um, and then he almost got arrested. That would have ruined everything for him, but he didn't, he got to go on deployment. He's now back home and safe. And well, thank you for serving our country, brother. Yep. Yep. Stephen Perry. That's a good name. job, Stephen. That's a good fun story right there. Yep. And then the other question is on that scenario, um, what was the time that you got, got, did you, have you fought where you lost? Yo, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so well, where's that moment where you're like, damn, I didn't care. I didn't know that one was coming. Well, I mean, I've been beat up a lot in the gym. I never lost an MMA fight. I've only had two. Um, I got jumped really bad one night. That's the, mm. that's the first. And I started that fight. I was, that was dude. I was an idiot. <laughs> sure. You're right. I was an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I was 19 years old. I was drunk. I had, you know, my ex-girlfriend was at this party and, um, she was smiling at too many dudes. Yeah. She, she started dancing with some guy. I like said something to him. I cracked him and dropped him. And the next thing I knew they, all of his buddies were on me, man. And I got dropped with a punch and I was like, kind of like army crawling my way through this crowd and getting like bottles broken over my head and getting kicked in the head. I remember seeing like a white Nike, Come, come from one side one, of the room and Air Force one, boom, kicks me in the face. And then, uh, and then I look, I see, uh, you know, I get a fistful of knuckles, boom. And then I remember like the, one of the last things that hit me before I got my way out of this party was, um, uh, someone broke a lamp over my head. There was like a little table lamp that <laughs> someone so just picked it up I and love th this story. You threw that this. thing right over my head. And I was like, Oh, I could relate. Uh, <laughs> and I somehow, I somehow managed to get through this chaos and, and got up to my feet and just ran outside and, you know, had to like, I jumped some fences. My face was all bloody. And uh, my buddy pulled around uh, on the other side of the block and I jumped in his car and he took me home. So but I got beat up that night. I got beat up pretty good. Oh my goodness. That's all. Is this the second or third segment right now? I'm so confused. I'm so caught up in the, in the stories. This is the third segment, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so, but geez, I, I'm like thinking, do we break or do we keep going? Because I'm <laughs> loving these stories right here. I got so caught up in what his stories you, my mind's going to my childhood right now Yeah. that I just lost total concentration. No of the show. High five. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally like, as you mentioned stories like that, it literally took me back to my childhood. Like, yeah. Oh dude, I can tell you some crazy stories too. <laughs> like, Oh Real. God, we're not, but Oh, just, it's crazy when you grow up like that, right? Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. it, it really is something to think, and it's a testament to get out of it mm -hmm. and, and to be alive. And sure. then for you now to have your black belt and be a trained martial artist, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of martial artists go through some stupid shit like that, Yep. right? Because you got to go through those toughness stages of figuring out who the fuck you are and then realizing I need to cone that in and... and and use this energy the right way. Exactly. And use it in sport and yep. use it in jujitsu. And as you said, you had two matches. So are you trying to do MMA as well, full on? Or? You know, I, uh, I I fought a couple times back in the day. Um, I was actually still living in Indiana when I fought MMA. And then I moved out here and pretty much solely focused on jujitsu because I saw I saw where it was going. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm on the path to getting a black belt. And, you know, it's like the way I saw it was – if I get my black belt, it's like a college degree. I can always teach jujitsu. I can always compete. I can always um, teach seminars around the world. So let's focus on that. And um, 
over the years, I mean, I had a boxing match a few years ago, but I've mainly, I've, I've not focused much on striking. I've mainly been doing jujitsu, but it's still in the realm of possibility. I'm 30 years old. I still might want to have some, some more MMA fights, uh, before it's all said and done, you know, subversive Michael, he's trying to do, um, <clears throat> some bare knuckle fights. Yes, I'm he sure is. He's told you about that. Oh yeah. We've heard all about it. It's something that intrigues me. You know, I've, we've, I've, uh, we've had some of the fighters in here before. It's a small ring. Yeah, I've been hit with some bare knuckles, so I know I can take it. I'm, I don't know. It might be something I, I want to do in the future. We'll see. It, you know, it's it's got to make sense for me. Well, the caveman is who you go by. It's what your nickname is. But you have the caveman headlock series. What is this? So, uh, well, I'll start with the, the caveman necktie is my official uh, choke that I created when I was, I was still living in Indiana and when I was training jujitsu a lot, um, basically it's a, it's like an anaconda choke slash guillotine choke, but I'm putting my shin in your neck, like, like while I'm choking you. And, uh, it's hard to explain. I would have to show it, but Connor, come on up here. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> How many different holds? <laughs> so there's, so I, you know, I start my, um, my series with, you know, teaching that specific choke. And then I kind of branch off and talk about all the other uh, submissions and all the other transitions you can do based off of that one single position. And uh, that's awesome. I, I created an instructional on it about three years ago and uh, we filmed it. And, and yeah, I was watching some it. of the video it was awesome. Yeah. Cool. And it's just how you roll over on the guy and you're mm -hmm. sitting there, lock the arm and then lock it here, lock this elbow and this and that. Yeah. I was watching that digging it going, Ooh, that's a nice one. I want to show my son this. Uh-huh. It's yeah, the instructor, little... the instructional is still on sale, uh, jujitsux.com. If anybody's interested in learning some exotic chokes and, uh, strangle holds. It's funny because when I was, it's my son's eight now. So he's getting into more fighting and wrestling around with me. And, um, when I was a bouncer, I used to do a lot of close. It's so much jujitsu style, you know, get, get him out of the clubs that situations. Yeah. And I used to love getting people at arm bar this or that, or this just mm -hmm. tight situations when, you know, and I look at them, but you could punch me first, but I promise you, you're going to leave the club one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave. Yeah. Like there's no, and I guess what, there's going to be a bunch of other dudes around here in any minute now. Yeah. So it's, I, I try to handle my situations like that. Like, Hey dude, I'm promise you it's not going to be, it's not going to end well for you. Yeah. But you can, I'll give you the first one. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, then, comes, boom, boom, and, then, it's boom, boom, and then just wrap them up. It comes in handy when you're a bouncer. You know, I, one of my first jobs out here uh, when I moved to San Diego was uh, was bouncing. I bounced for three years at a, a bar called the Tipsy Crow in downtown San Diego. And uh, I still... I still to this day am very close with the uh, with the general managers and the the owner and um, they actually they've sponsored a lot of my my matches oh, that's and dope. fights and stuff. So, uh, but but hey, that jujitsu came in handy when I worked there. From dude, time and to not time. only that, so when I was a bouncer, that's what I, I was a bouncer before I started fighting, and because of that, and before that, I was just a you know athlete playing football and baseball, rugby, all the other stuff. But then I feel like the bouncing was what got me ready for fighting because I'm like, dude, and I trained with like Frank Shamrock, Kung Lee, like all the Javier oh, Mendez. Nice. I actually carried the belts in the ring UFC seven in Brazil with Frank Shamrock. I carried his, oh, his wow. belt in the like me, him, Javier Mendez, and Maurice Smith. Uh, and you know, I know Alex from Fairtex who passed away. So I used to train with all these Bay Area boys back in the day. Wow. And and I love it. It was one of those, it's one of those great things when I'm next to somebody, close to somebody. And I always feel like for people to learn that you're, it's just a different confidence level. Like 100%. you said, when you get better, you just know, like, I'm like, I gotta shut the fuck up, man. Mm -hmm. Get away from me. Why? Be Cause I'll fucking smack you. Get away from me. Yeah. Like, just get away from me. It's like, it'd be too easy. You know, <laughs> you know what you I mean? Want, and like yeah. when I was, and I never went through the younger cause I was always a big dude too. And sometimes I just use my bigness in the wrong way. Just, oh, let me show how far I can throw you. You yeah. know what I mean? Because when you're 350 and strong, and I'm benching 500, yeah. you know, it wasn't the big 350. That's just a fat glow. I was like big, heavy, strong. And then I'm like, oh, this is horrible. I can't be doing this. Sure. You know I mean? yeah, like, yeah. I can't just have fun with people. When I was drinking, that's why I had to stop drinking. <laughs> Same here. Same I'm here. like, no more drinking. Well, uh, 
you guys, Sloan, the caveman climber, is going to be fighting the co-main event. I like to do the high five with everybody that comes on here, Sloan. So I got five simple questions for you. As we know, you're a cannabis consumer and use it for medicine and all the other good stuff. How old were you, Sloan, the first time you smoked cannabis and where'd you get it from? I was 14 and I, uh, I, my best friend who he, he actually passed away years ago. I'm sorry to hear. Um, his brother talked me into trying it with him. My, my best friend was in the other room talking to his girlfriend and his brother was like, Hey, come out back with me. And he's like, you ever smoke weed? And I'm like, no. And he's like, you want to try it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> so, yep. That's years. always fun. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to see a dead body? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what? You want to see a dead body? Anybody know what movie that is? Boys in the hood. Boys there in the it is. Julio yes. Got it. Julio got, got it. it. You know that. Sloan, question number two. What's your favorite way to use cannabis? Edibles. Edibles. Yeah. As you said at the beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Edible. Is there a certain milligram that you like? Is it? Man, I'm a lightweight. So five milligram little gummy bears. Five is milligrams is perfect for me. Maybe, you know, if I'm like, if I'm getting wild, maybe 10 milligrams, but that's, I don't go any higher than that. No, it's good. You know your limits, and that's what's key right there. Knowing yeah. your balance and knowing who keeps you nice and tame and happy, and mm -hmm. I don't need to do too much. This keeps me right in the right spot. Question number three, craziest place you ever used or smoked cannabis? Man, I know I have a good answer. The jujitsu floor. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but... but uh, <laughs> Back in Indiana somewhere crazy? No, probably like probably on a rooftop in in monterey mexico Ooh. where it was illegal Orale, pues. i was down I there like for that. for uh the evi combat jujitsu yeah but i feel like that's it but i think i i don't know wish i had a better answer for you that's the best I could do. No, that's good. You could have fell off and fucking killed yourself. That's pretty crazy there. I True, mean, yeah. you know, being on a roof isn't a fun, easy spot to be at. Question number four, the high five zone. What's your go-to munchies after you get high? I try to keep it healthy. I typically go. Yeah, for especially it. when you have fights that you got to weigh in at 205 at. I typically go for fruit. A lot of fruit. I did offer you some fruit today. Yeah, you did. You you offered me the strawberries. I'm yeah, trying I'll, to eat I'll do healthy this, right now myself. Again. Do the strawberries, pineapples with the tahini on it. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah, I just did that today. I had a banana and fruit for lunch today. I was like, you know what? I've been eating too much again. I'm, I can feel myself getting heavy. Like I said, I was real big at one point. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let me do the fruit lunch today. I'm doing fruit lunch today. I'm doing fruit lunch tomorrow. I'm fruiting it up. Good Question number five of the high five with Sloan the Caveman. Go check him out, you guys, in San Diego. It's going to be a great event. Come hang out. Cannabis Talk 101 is going to be there. And hopefully so will you. July 22nd at the Marina Sheridan in good old SD, the 619. Sloan, if you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Biggie Smalls. Why? Why Biggie? He's my favorite rapper of all time. I love him. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. I loved Biggie. I was listening to him from the time I was a little kid. Are you for real? Yeah. This is crazy. I'm about to show you this picture right now. This might blow your mind or you might just think it's a joke, but that's me and Biggie three days before he died and no I was way, smoking bro. blunts with him. No way. Yeah. I put that on everything. I put that on Go everything. Check it out. Check it out. This, I, we did the last interview with Notorious B.I.G., and when I worked at Wild 94.9 in San Francisco and he walks in the studio and the whole East Coast, West Coast, and I was, you see how big I was there. He's a big dude, too. So, you know what I'm saying? He walks up, I walk up and two big dude. And we just I didn't stop because he's kept walking. You know how it is. Yeah. You know, the big guy fucking idiot. It's how we are. Mm. And I'm young at that time. We're the same age. He kept walking. I got what's up? What's up? Uh huh. And he's like, what's up? And I was like, welcome to Cali. And I put some weed in his hand. Oh my god! And he was like, "Oh, love, right?" Oh, and yeah. we just fucking hit it off. Then we kicked it there at the studio. That night, I come back to the uh, venue that was at BMG, the music produced studio there, yeah, where he had his album release party, the double CD. Yep. And I show up late because I had to get my hair done, all kinds of whatever. I was just coloring my hair purple, green, all this shit. And I show up, and I'm late. So the CDs are already playing. He goes, let's go downstairs and listen to it in the van. Me, him, Little C's, and my boy, Little Rich, dog, were downstairs in the van just smoking blunt after blunt. That's Kicking amazing, it. bro. Three days after he died. That's an amazing story. So wow. as you say, Biggie, I'm like, let me share my little Biggie story with yeah, you. That's, that's really And the cool. crazier part is on this picture in the story, 
his son was on this show and mm -hmm. I printed this picture out for him and I gave him the picture. I said, hey, dog, this is your dad three days before. I told him the story. He looked at that picture. He goes, dude, what's up? He goes, I still have that shirt he's wearing. Wow. Like, that's crazy. That's the shirt Full that circle. I still have of my dad. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. That's a really cool story. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I thought you were bullshitting when you said that initially. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was like, is this some Photoshopped? Hell you no, did no, zoom in that. too to like <laughs> yeah i was like oh that's a real picture that's oh crazy. i have other ones i was just the one i mean i could show you more of him too that you know and me and him hanging and kicking it but that's crazy oh yeah i could show you the ones too with me carrying the belts with frank shamrock all this fun stuff the good old history of life and you know yeah when you're young and fun and doing your thing well good dude good luck on your fight coming up and uh is there anything else that you want to say on the podcast before we let you go oh man i don't uh come watch me scrap july 22nd and uh, follow me on Instagram at Sloan Climber. Uh, yeah, that's all for me. There it is, Sloan Climber. S L O A N C L Y M E R. It's going to be a big jujitsu tournament out there, you guys. And we're going to be out there. So come hang out. It's Cannabis Talk One Hundred and One. If nobody else loves you, we, we do. do.